Women's Health Meeting Programme. Uh, it's a programme which has been running for all primary schools in Ireland and it's effective not only in changing children's behaviour and parental behaviour but as you'll see it's also been effective in changing government policy. So the government are now backing this programme, like I said, and rolling out to every primary school in Ireland. Um, just to let you know, you've all got a flyer in your information packs about the programme. Um, you might, the characters that are going to be on the presentation here are a little bit different. We've been working on updating um, our characters, bringing the programme into the next, uh, next century, really. Um, so just to let you know that it is the same programme, even though it may look a little bit different. Okay, uh, so to get started... Um, the Food Use Programme, the primary goal is to increase fruit and vegetable consumption in primary school children. So, why increase fruit and vegetable consumption? I'm sure most of you already know this. Um, basically, adult consumption of fruit and vegetables is way below the recommended 400 grams daily. And we have a worldwide obesity crisis, and there is a definite need to change um, children's and adults' eating behaviours. Again, what are the benefits of eating a diet rich in fruit and vegetables? We all know um, it can help prevent obesity. It's protective against many diseases like cancer and coronary heart disease. And it's also important generally for general health, for healthy skin, teeth and hair. Okay, so moving on to the program. Um, it was designed by psychologists at Bangor University and it's based on behavioral principles and theory. And it brings about major and long-lasting change in children's behaviour, which I'll get onto in a minute when I talk through the evidence. Okay, so what are, what are the principles underlying the Food Dudes Programme? Um, we call them the three R's. We have role modelling, which is the Food Dudes that you'll see on your leaflet and the guys in the corner here. Um, they're role models for the children in schools to imitate. They're slightly older than the children in the schools, so uh, the primary school children look up to them and want to model their behaviour. And they're seen um, in DVD episodes battling with General Junk, who tries to rid the world of its life force by stealing fruit and veg. And we also have rewards. So throughout the program, children are rewarded for eating fruit and vegetables. So this is to encourage them to do something which perhaps they don't really want to do. And finally, with the, with the use of the role modeling, the rewards, we get children to repeatedly taste fruit and vegetables. Um, initially, a lot of children may say they don't like fruit and vegetables, they don't like the taste, um, but with repeated tasting, you actually get physiological changes um, that results in them basically developing a liking for these foods. Okay, so the program runs in two phases. We have phase one and phase two. Phase one is 16 days um, and runs in the schools every day. Uh, children are given a portion of fruit and a portion of vegetable. And for days one to four, if they take a bite of the fruit and the vegetable, they get a small reward. From days five to 16, the children have to eat a whole portion of the fruit and the vegetable to earn their reward. Um, and we define a portion as the amount that will fit into the child's cupped hand. Okay, so these, these 16 days are where um, the children basically get rewarded every day for eating fruit and vegetables. And we develop a liking for fruit and vegetables. And after phase one, we move into phase two, which is really more about establishing a habit um, of eating fruit and vegetables daily. So the focus shifts from rather uh, the fruit and veg being given by us to the children, like it was in the 16 days, the children are encouraged to bring in their own fruit and vegetables from home or to eat what's provided in school. So on day 17, um, they're, they're given a reward for a home pack um, diary that they completed during phase one. And they're also given a letter um, to take them to their parents and some fruit and vegetable boxes to enable them to bring in fruit and vegetables at lunchtime. Um, and in phase two, rather than being rewarded every day for consuming fruit and vegetables, the children instead get a tick on a wall chart and they get a tick for fruit and a tick for veg. And when they've got enough ticks, they get a reward. Um, and gradually they have to get more and more ticks to get each um, subsequent reward. So the rewards are kind of phased out over time. So we're still rewarding the behaviour, but it becomes less and less frequent. And by the end of phase two, the children have established this habit of bringing in and eating fruit and vegetables every day. And phase two is, is, is generally ongoing. It will, it will roll mm -hmm. on until the end of the school year. Okay, so why does food use work? As I said before, it's based on behavioural principles. 
Um, we've have got DVD episodes that show the food dudes battling with general junk, and these represent the role models that encourage children to taste fruit and vegetables repeatedly. Um, the children also, in, in tasting fruit and vegetables repeatedly, the children uh, come to realise that actually fruit and veg taste really good, so they begin to want to eat them for their own right instead of for the reward that we give them. They also, um, children also begin to become proud to see themselves as fruit and vegetable eaters, so it's kind of uncool initially to eat fruit and veg, but by the end of the programme, children are actually feeling really proud that they, they are eating uh, these foods. And finally, the programme really does bring about a change in the whole culture of the school, moving it towards one that really does support uh, consumption of fruit and vegetables. And there is also a lot of evidence that it also changes culture at home. Um, we get a lot of parental feedback saying um, there's no more battles at the dinner table um, and that their children are asking them to buy more fruit and vegetables in the supermarket. So the programme really does um, encourage this change in culture at school and at home. Okay, um, so you're probably thinking, okay, yeah, this sounds great, but where's the evidence? Um, I'll run through quickly um, some of the uh, key results that we found before showing you some actual figures. Um, so basically, we, we get uh, large increases in consumption of fruit and vegetables. Um, these increases are actually greatest in those children who are what we call the poorest eaters, um, the children that eat the least to begin with. They're the ones where you see the biggest um, improvements in consumption. Uh, the increase is also long-lasting. Um, initially, um, we've always presented before saying it, we've shown increases up to a year later. I'm going to be showing you some data late, um, later today, which basically says that we're getting these increases up to two and a half years after the program. Um, we also see uh, increases in a wide range of fruit and vegetables. So you can use pretty much any fruit and vegetables in the program and you will see an increase in consumption of those foods. Um, even things like uh, raw cabbage, um, cauliflower, um, sugar snap peas, anything, you see increases in these foods. Um, it's effective for all children of all ages from 4 to 11 and it's equally effective for boys and girls. And as I said before, it actually um, extends from the school, which is where the programs run, it actually results in changes in home consumption as well. So it does generalise across contexts. Okay, so let's look at some figures. Um, there were a lot of initial studies done um, in the early 2000s. I think this study was done in about 2002 in two schools in London. So we have food food school here on the left and the control school on the right. And what we've got here is the consent consumed of what children were given. <coughs> and they were given a piece of fruit and a portion of vegetable. So at baseline here, or before the intervention, <coughs> children are eating roughly 4% of fruit that they were given and 11% of the vegetables they were given. If you have a look, after phase one of the intervention, this has gone up to 68% for fruit and 48% for vegetables. And again, after phase two, after four months into phase two, again, you've still got these large increases that are maintained even four months after the initial phase one. And the interesting thing is if you look at the control school, you can see that there's no real change in fruit and vegetable consumption over this time. And the really interesting thing in the control school they, they were actually given the fruit and vegetables for the 16 days like they were in the food dude school. They just weren't given the rest of the program. So the kids in the school were repeatedly exposed to the fruit and vegetables, but they just weren't eating them, which perhaps talks about uh, school fruit schemes and perhaps maybe they're not necessarily what's needed to get an increase in consumption. Maybe we need something more to encourage children to be eating the foods that we're giving them. Okay, so... How did this end up becoming an Irish rollout? Um, basically, after seeing um, a presentation of these initial findings, um, the Irish government were really keen to see if the program could be brought over to Ireland and would work in Irish schools. So they funded um, a pilot study done in Dublin. Uh, one, again, same setup, one food dude school, one control school. And we found basically the same kind of large increases that we'd seen in the London schools. The interesting thing is that in uh, Ireland, you don't actually have a school canteen system, so it is all dependent on children bringing in fruit and vegetables from home in their lunch boxes. So really, not only did uh, we need to change children's behaviour, but we needed to change parental behaviour as well. So what we've got here is we've got uh, fruit and vegetable provision by parents in children's lunch boxes and fruit and vegetable consumption by children of what they were given. 
Um, and again, we've got a food dude school and a control school. And the uh, after data here is a year later. So this is, the, you know, this is really um, a long time after the program started. So initially, you can see baseline consumption of fruit and vegetables in the food dude school and control school are roughly the same. Kids are eating about 60 to 70 grams. Um, oh, sorry, this is provision, sorry. Parents are providing about 60 or 70 grams. After the in intervention, we get an increase up to 130 grams in the food dude school, <coughs> but no change in the control. So this is great. We're actually getting a change in parental behavior here. Um, and when we look at the kids' uh, consumption behavior, Again, before the program, they're consuming about 30 to 50 grams of fruit and vegetables. And after the program, we get these really large increases in consumption <coughs> in the food school, but no real change in the control school. So as with the London schools, this, you know, this pilot study really showed that the program does bring about large and long-lasting increases in consumption and also in parental provision. So following this, uh, the success of this pilot, the Irish government decided to... Uh, try a, a pilot rollout in 150 schools uh, across Ireland. Um, after just one year, the program was shown to be so successful, it was actually awarded um, a World Health Organization award for uh, best practice in battling obesity. <coughs> and in 2007, the Irish government said, okay, this is great, and we're gonna roll this out to every primary school in Ireland, um, which is about just over 3,000 schools. Uh, currently, I think about half the schools have received the program, which is about 200,000 children. Um, what I'll show you now is some of the data we've collected from parents whose children have participated in the program already. Um, so this is uh, part of the pilot rollout data that was done in 2005. Um, we asked parents and teachers um, whether they'd seen any increase in the amount of lunchbox fruit eaten by children. Um, as you can see, 92% of uh, parents said that their children were eating more lunchbox fruit. And again, 94% of teachers said the same thing. And we see a similar thing for vegetables, with 81% of parents saying their children are eating more lunchbox vegetables, and 83% of teachers saying that they're seeing the children eat more lunchbox vegetables in the classrooms. And again, the interesting thing is we also asked parents about whether they'd seen any change in their child's consumption of fruit and vegetables at home, and also whether they'd noticed any change in their own uh, consumption of fruit and vegetables. And again, 94% of parents said that their children were eating more fruit and vegetables at home. And 88% said that they themselves were also eating more fruit and vegetables. So like I said, this, this program runs in schools and it targets children, but we're, we're affecting children's behavior and we're also affecting their parents' behavior as well. Um, and finally, this is the data I mentioned earlier. We've, we've actually gone back to some of the initial schools uh, that began in about 2005, 2006. And we've asked them, um, you know, are you, what are you eating now? Um, and are you still eating more than you were before the program? And as you can see, um, for schools 1.5 years after the program, they're saying that they're eating roughly uh, 1.7, so nearly two portions additional fruit and vegetables a day since the start of the program. And we see a same, similar thing 2.5 years later. So even though it's two and a half years since the start of the program, we're still getting parents saying that they're eating roughly two more portions of fruit and vegetables a day. Okay, uh, one final thing. Uh, one thing that we looked at um, in a school in Wolverhampton, Wolverhampton um, is a region in uh, England which has decided to also run the program in all of its primary schools. And we've actually been looking at changes in other foods um, as a result of the program. It's not something we necessarily expected. We, we could see an increase in fruit and vegetable consumption without seeing any displacement of other foods, um, but we thought we'd have a look at it anyway. Um, and this is um, an initial finding which does seem to suggest that not only are children eating more fruit and vegetables, but actually purely by encouraging kids to eat more fruit and veg, we're actually seeing a reduction in their unhealthy snack food. So unhealthy snack foods here, we call them crisps, biscuits, cake, uh, chocolate, um, sweets, anything like that. Um, so prior to the intervention, children were eating roughly uh, 0.8 portions of um, unhealthy snack foods. And after the intervention, we see a reduction of roughly 20% in the consumption of these foods. And this was actually data from about six schools in Wolverhampton. So this isn't just one school and a few kids. This was, this was a lot of schools and a lot of children. So we're really happy with this finding because we don't directly target um, 
consumption of these foods. We only promote fruit and vegetable consumption. Okay, uh, one final thing. So this program has been shown to be effective in changing children's behaviours, parent behaviours, in changing policy here in Ireland. And it's also received a number of awards recognising um, its success as a health promotion programme. So it's received a Caroline Walker Trust Award, the World Health Organisation Award, and last year a Social Marketing Centre Award. Um, and I think just two weeks ago we also got some really good news that the uh, programme was awarded the Chief Medical Officer's Public Health uh, Gold Award um, for being such a, an effective health promotion intervention. So we're really excited by this as well. Okay, and that's it. So thank you very much.